the key is this level, right? So if we did get above 30,000 and we stay there for, let's say, a week or so and establish ourselves back above that level, I think at that point, then I say, okay, listen, we're back above the psychological lows from the bull market of 2021. Now I think the low is in. But as of now, to me, this is a run of your mill bear market rally. If you go back to 2018, 2019, we had periods where we were up one to 200% off of the lows in Bitcoin, and yet we still came down and retested that 3,500 ish low. So you can't get too excited yet when the technical level that is the huge wall in Bitcoin hasn't been broken yet. So I'm sticking with 12 to 13,000 and maybe as low as 9,000 as of now. Okay. Gareth Soloway, a well known technical analyst, may be now ready to make the long awaited shift to being positive after several months of continuously being negative. Soloway recently discussed his most recent price forecasts for the most valuable crypto asset. In an interview with Daniela Camden of Stansberry Research, the renowned expert claimed that if Bitcoin were to move past the barrier level of $30,000 and maintain it there, for a few days, he would immediately turn optimistic. For Bitcoin and the rest of the cryptocurrency market, according to Soloway, this would unquestionably signal the end of the bear market and the start of a bull one. A major psychological threshold for the cryptocurrency asset has, however, been the $30,000 resistance. Although Bitcoin has experienced some sizable price increases over the previous few weeks, it has sadly continued to trade below the necessary range to move forward. Soloway drew comparisons between the current price changes and the price movements prior to the all-time 2021 highs, during his discussion with Stansberry. The well-known technical analyst also shared his thoughts on Dogecoin, which has had a major uptrend recently due to Elon Musk's change in Twitter's logo. Would it be a good idea for you to buy more Bitcoin, Doge, or other assets? The answers you seek may be found in Gareth Soloway's thoughtful debate. Please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and enable post notifications for new videos before we begin listening to Soloway's interview. Normally we see risk on being something that drives Bitcoin up, but over the last month with the banking crisis, we've actually seen risk off be a positive for Bitcoin. So this kind of a weird thing where Bitcoin people aren't sure, wait, which one is it? Is it a risk on asset or risk off asset? And right now the price action is telling us it doesn't know, right? I mean, we're even seeing the banks selling off a little bit today and that's not even driving Bitcoin to the upside. So the biggest thing to do here is look at the chart. And I think the chart really tells us a lot about where Bitcoin is relative to where it could go. So if I zoom out on my yeah. chart here, and this is amazing, we're going back to the levels that were the lows during the bull market. And that's where Bitcoin is hovering just underneath. And so if, if you think about it on a psychological basis, this is like the, the Great Wall of China. I mean, this is the epic wall of Bitcoin's price action. And so that explains a lot why it's having so much trouble breaking above this $30,000 level. So for me, when I look at this, I stay bearish or sus a suspect in terms of whether or not the bull market is back on in Bitcoin. I'm still favoring the fact that we're still in a bear market in Bitcoin until we get over 30,000 and hold above it. Because right now, this is the line in the sand. And if Bitcoin can't get through this, it's still bear market central. Yeah, so if we get above 30,000, and I think this is key, is that uh, a break above for a day or two, that doesn't matter to me. I've seen algorithms that'll do that purposely to stop people out or actually convince people that last little bit of FOMO to jump in on board. Think about the 65,000, which was the early 2021 high, and the 69,000 level where it convinced everyone we were headed to 100,000. But if we stay above there for a significant amount of time, a week or so, then likely that tells us that we are going to head even higher. Your next level leg probably has the chance to take us up towards that 35 40,000 level probably over the next month or so. For me as soon as the banking crisis started, I said to myself, "All right, this is exactly why Bitcoin was created. This is the essence of why we need Bitcoin." But again, in the shorter term, when you see panic, like when you go back to the COVID 2020 March period where things were in, a, in really a panic central, you saw even gold selling off because during panic, people don't ask questions. They sell, they ask those questions later. And I think that's what we're coming into. We're coming into a period in the equity markets where I think you're going to get a realization. There's a recession. I know we'll talk the S&P in a little while, but you're going to get this sell off in the stock market. My guess is it bleeds into crypto and it creates more selling in crypto to the downside. Okay. It's so tough to know what the heck's going on here. I mean, you know, Elon Musk, again, he, he loves catering to the crowd to kind of the the smaller investor the retail yep. crowd and so on a technical basis we can see that you actually had this beautiful 
kind of what we call a wedge pattern. It's a triangle pattern and we broke above it. But on a technical basis, look at where we went. We went right back to the highs of February of 2023 and that's where price stalled out. So again, I think I think in, in terms of this becoming a mainstream asset, the only way that happens is if he really incorporates Doge into Twitter as a form of payment that could then give it some relevancy. Otherwise, I look, I always sell these type of events because again, it's, it's, I still remember when he came out and he, you know, he was pumping and he went on Saturday Night Live. That was actually the high of the asset right. back then. And to me, it's, it's more you sell these type of crazed pumps where everyone's FOMOing in. So do not buy the hype here. Yeah, I wouldn't. It's just again, it, it's one of those things you could you could two x your money, but you could also go to zero. So so for me, when I'm investing hard earned money, I want probabilities heavily on my side. In this case, there's mm -hmm. not probabilities oh. heavily on my side. We can flip over to the S and P 500, yep. and I think it's important to recognize that the S and P has really gone nowhere in a long period of time. That's actually not a good thing when you when you have a big drop from the all time highs, and then you get into this consolidation pattern. What it tells you is there's an equal amount of buyers and sellers. And that's why price is chopping sideways, right? A one seller equals one buyer. Problem is, we know the retail crowd continues to be by the dippers. So why haven't we gone higher? The answer is smart money, big money, institutional money is likely selling into it. So ultimately, my guess is we have another leg down in the in the second half of the year. We retest and actually take out the October lows and probably head down towards that pre-COVID high here on the chart. So I do have a downside price target at minimum by year end of 3,300 and change. I do think worst case, we could even touch 3,000. Yeah, from 4,000 to let's say 3,000, we're talking a, a, about a 25% drop from here. So again, I think the second half is gonna be, I mean, this is gonna be the kicker for the second half, is it's gonna be a point where investors finally realize that we are definitely going into a recession and that the Fed can't bail us out by cutting rates aggressively or printing money because inflation is so high. All right. In in the past in the last 10 15 years any sort of blip in the screen case in point 2018 in december the markets dropped about 20 percent in six weeks the fed started cutting rates immediately they could do that because inflation was sub two percent um, they could do what they did in COVID because inflation was sub 2%. You can't do that with inflation up above 2% or 3% as I think it's going to stick around. And that's going to be a realization that is scary for the market. It's like a, a child where the bumper, bu the bumper sides get removed. You're now open to get hurt by the reality of the market. And that's going to be pretty scary for the markets. You're going to see a big sell off when that realization happens. So, and this is, by the way, I remember talking six months, a year ago with you. And, and I talked about how, how even even when the dollar was up 20% and gold was only down, what, 5% on right. the year in 2022, how bullish that was, because in a normal market, if the dollar's up 20%, gold should be down 20%. And so it told us there was big money accumulating. There's no bigger money than central banks. Central banks were buying. That was an indicator to buy. We've obviously seen the price action. Now we had this little flag pattern. Look at this beautiful flag and breakout today on the back of what you're mentioning. And also the dollar is getting substantially weaker today as well. We are going to go up and attack this triple top up here at around 2075. You might get a small pullback there, but I still have it priced in that gold is going a lot higher. The momentum trade hasn't even caught up to gold yet. So I think 2300 by year end is a no brainer, maybe even higher. But again, I do think that gold is following the playbook of the 1970s, the same chart pattern playing out. So this is, and I've talked about this for the last year, how this is what was going on, where you had the same like 2018, yeah. to 2020 and change that was this run up which lasted from 1970 to 1975 we then had this sideways pullback even when inflation was going up you had this pullback in gold all right same thing happened over the last two years from 2020 to 2023 ish early 2023 and then look at what happened afterwards in the late 70s into the early 80s this meteoric rise in gold so i think that's the replication if you look back historically this is the only period in recent semi-recent history we have to go off of and it really tells us that gold could have its moment here we've been waiting a long time for gold to have its moment it might soon be here what do you think about Gareth Soloway's new projections for Bitcoin, Doge, and Gold? In the section below, please share your thoughts and views. Be sure to set on post alerts for future videos like this, subscribe to the channel, and indicate your appreciation for this one by clicking the like button. Many thanks for tuning in.